The Sands Showbiz Podcast, chatting with Nigel Clark. It's Teresa Bazaar. Yes, look at you. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you look absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you no, what. I've got to brush my hair and put some lipstick on for you, okay? I cannot lie. Well, you always look amazing. <laughs> you always look amazing. I can't believe that I'm actually talking to you on the podcast because it's going to be great. I've been a massive fan. In fact, later on, we've got the biggest fan possibly in the UK. <laughs> He's not going to be talking to us, but I'm going to be telling you who it is. I think you'll be okay. surprised. All right. <laughs> Last, I actually quite like surprises. It oh, makes good. me think my mind goes chink, chink, chink. You know? On the show today, on the Sun Showbiz podcast, we are so lucky to have a fantastic guest, a guest I've admired for years. I remember going all the way back, watching it on the TV shows. It's Teresa Bazaar. Hello. Hello, my darling. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, thanks ever so much for joining us. It's great to have you on the podcast. Lots to chat about. Of course, you've got a brand new song out at the moment. We're going to come to that in a mo, though, because I need to go back all the way back. You know, when we were watching you on Top of the Pops and how it all started for you back in, was it in the 70s when you first got that first it hit? It was. It was. Uh... Guys and Dolls, my first pop group, 1974. I mean, seriously, even now I kind of stop and I think, oh, gosh, that's a very long time ago. I mean, that's 50 years. So, um, And I'm still in touch with Julia Martin, the Dolls, and we are firm friends for life. And it, it's it's a marvellous thing to yeah. celebrate. It really is. How yeah. did you get into it in the first place, Teresa? Oh, purely by accident, as like most, some sometimes that happens in life and... Uh, I answered an audition. I mean, you know, I answered an audition because I uh, um, had been doing a couple of pantomimes and then a little touring show, yeah. uh, and uh, answered an audition for girls and boys who could sing and dance. So I thought, yep, yeah, I can do that. And uh, I went along, and it was for a Guys and Dolls, a pop group. Yeah. And and I I'd chosen this ridiculous things. I I sang somewhere from West Side Story. You had to say a piece of prose. Well, I chose Shakespeare. I mean, I was and I wore a black polo neck jumper and a long skirt and flat boots. I mean, you know, I had no idea about image or style or pop music or anything. And uh, I guess innocence sometimes, naivety, that can be like a winning card as well. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Yeah. I, mean, I will jokingly say I might have been the only girl smaller than David Van Day. So it was, they were pairing us up, you know, I thought, oh, she's cute. She'll, <laughs> she'll work, you know. Oh. And they just looked all the other stuff. Like, I don't know. I've, I've no idea. Yeah. So it was a little bit like uh, fortune. Is it just like look sometimes along the way as well? You need a bit of look as well as talent. Oh, I, 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 I truly believe, believe that. I think it's, um, but a friend said it's like 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. And I think that's true as well. But I think yeah. in life, you know, it's just, it is timing, right time, right place. And funnily enough, um, I was about to have my tonsils out at, at the same time wow. as all of this going on. And um, and and my mum and dad said, but you've got your operation. I went, no, I'm not doing that. You know, and I was very young and but I just kind of thought, well, you can't really go and say, yes, I'd like the job, but I can't come to the signing of the contracts because I'm being, going to be in hospital having my tonsils out. I mean, it just wouldn't really work. So, no. no. <laughs> so from there, you obviously went on, and everybody, by the way, knows of Dollar. Everybody I speak to knows no, of Dollar. And what I did, I did an experiment on Facebook, yeah, and I, I just took a picture of you back in 77, and I just put your eyes on, just a little clip of your eyes, and I said, coming <laughs> soon a fantastic guest, and everybody knew who it was, just off your eyes. Um, yeah, it's incredible, that, isn't it? <laughs> wow, that's very smart. That's a good tip for me. Mm, I have to think about that. Well done, you. Thank you. And, uh, well, you were one of the best-looking ladies on Top of the Pops, weren't you, in the 70s? Let's face it. I mean, I remember with my pal, when Top of the Pops came on on the Thursday evening, we used to look at, you know, who's on, and you say, oh, dollars on! And it was the perfect combination you had going on there, didn't you, in the pair? Oh, well, that's very sweet of you to say and lovely. But uh, I didn't really think that. Uh, I think when you're in the centre of everything that's going on in your world. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing at the beginning with image and style. I had huge issues with how I looked. And that's from the guys and dolls days. And 
just didn't know how I really fitted in and um, sort of body shape, all sorts of, I think, you know, a precursor to what so many young people go through these days, but no one used to talk about it back then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, and it's very, it's very relevant um, for young, uh, well, girls and boys. Actually, it's it's not a sex, sexist thing. It's for everybody trying to grow up, understanding what, how do I want to look and what do I have to deal with? Oh, I wish my legs were longer. I wish this was this. You know, it's it's a fascinating thing, but actually being stuck on the television, I spent a lot of my life hiding behind the sofa. Really? What? Uh, 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 that that's the truth it, uh, it it's actually true I was terrified and I would kind of because you never see it back yeah think about that you never yeah. know what it looked like you might see you can see an image in the, the screens when you're actually doing your dress run or rehearsals at top of the pops or whatever tv but you never get to see what you looked like wow. until it's screening yeah and it's just stressful I used to hide literally hiding like a child behind the sofa sticking my head out going oh I think I look quite nice you know and sometimes <laughs> I'd actually hang my head in shame going why on earth did I want to wear that because that looks dreadful but yeah everyone thinks you've got a whole menagerie of people looking after you running after you there was nobody it was wow. just it's all, nobody. all your own styling was it then yeah, you do your own styling. You choose what you're going to wear, how you're going to look, if you're going to change it. Nobody. And I used to be stressed out. I mean, that's the irony, isn't it? You get, you know, you get a phone call back in the day. Um, you've climbed the charts. You're on top of the pops. And that's how it works. So you get a phone call at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. Yeah. From the promo people at the record label to say, we've just got the the charts through the BBC charts, the top 40, and you're in it. If it's your first model, you've climbed enough and hang on, we're pretty sure, but gar you know, but we just want to get the phone call in. You're guaranteed to have top of the pops tomorrow. They film on a Wednesday. So you'd be hanging for half an hour or an hour to have it confirmed. And then on the Tuesday, well, what am I going to wear? What's it all? Because, <laughs> and seriously, that's exactly Gosh. how it was. Amazing. We Very handsome, isn't it? It looked so terrific every time you were on. It was one of those moments, and we used to just stop and just stare. And, and even all the ladies as well said you looked terrific, as well as everybody just thought you looked terrific. And I think it's one of those um, parts of history, of musical history, that everybody remembers. Dollar, you had some great songs as well, didn't you? Yeah, we did. But I mean, just just playing on the the image for a sec, you know, I actually go um, obviously because I've reinvented my well re-emerged after decades of not doing anything but yeah. I was actually at my hairdressers the other day and I said to him I said if I could have another life at the beginning of a career maybe I would not choose glamorous because it is high intensive it's a big deal I could have had something like Sia had the best idea just have a wig that's over her face you can't see what she looks yeah. like <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter it's such a really really low budget kind of way of doing things I said and we were laughing I said it, it it's it's but it was authentic I suppose that was just the alternative me I just yeah. you know not me as a shy sort of introverted person it was yeah. my alter image that I just wanted to be glamorous and this but it was kind of my showbiz me not my real me yeah because you you had all these hits and you were doing the videos as well weren't you because a lot of videos came out as well that was yeah. really the start of all the videos wasn't it Early eighties, yeah, it all started getting going. Then, really, I think shooting star. We were only the third act ever to have a promo video for shooting star. Yeah, wow. and it was actually a chap with two tripods with cameras on yeah. in the studio. <laughs> that's oh. that's exactly what it was. There were so many great songs. I'll go back and uh, I think my favourite, and I always remember singing along to it. Um, Give me back my heart. I think that's my favourite. Is that your favourite? Have you got a favourite? Oh. Not really. You know, um, as far as the hits go. Yeah. Probably. But for, probably it is Give Me Back My Heart. But for a specific reason, I guess, they're, they're like your babies, basically. Yeah. These massive records. And uh, they do sort of change your life a little bit. And that was the end of the 
that well you know the the the, the peak of the Trevor Horn era yeah um but yeah give me back my heart and particularly because of the ending which was just accidental the whole of that ending which is just you know you get bits of pure magic I think in pop it, uh, uh, and that was for us that was one of them yeah. um and it was accidental and, and and I can remember the moments I can actually picture it in my head of what happened and it was just me inventing something that Trevor gave me some scrabble bits of writing on a piece of paper he said could you go in and do something with that I said what do you mean he said well just think of a melody and just kind of sing it out on the end wow. I went oh okay and so I'm singing it and uh and he's beaming at me <laughs> and I and, and I sort of go and we, we do it and he goes I said oh, okay I said well let's go again and he goes no 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 he said that was it and I said no I said because I, I, I'm a perfectionist I like to just go over and over and yeah reflect and, and he said no he said that's just what I was dreaming of and like you know it's like angels are watching you walk in your sleep it's about his dog that died Oh. that's actually the story at the end but he just gave me this scribble piece of paper and it was just yeah. him me and Gary Lang and the engineer just us in the studio very late one night yeah. and I, I'll never forget that so that's a little bit of magic because that is pure just creativity isn't it yeah was there a stronger person in Dollar then is it yourself or was it David um... you know who made all the decisions was there somebody who said who tried to make all the decisions should I say was there I think in the early days, we were a very, we were both very young uh, and, and we made a lot of decisions together. David Van Day had a great business savvy kind of brain and he was intuitive, very charming, um, had lots of talents. And so, no, we were very on the same page how the direction was going at the beginning. But when we started working with Trevor Horn after the, the Chris Neal era with those big, big hits. And then we became even bigger. That was when musically things were going so the eighties. Yeah. So fast. And I think that's where creatively and musically I came into my real happy place. Yeah. And David was kind of left behind. He didn't really understand. Yeah. Uh, and, and he wasn't that interested. He was more like a nuts and bolts. Well, I want to hit record and I want it to be successful and I want and I and I'm going but but the process and the sounds yeah. and it, it was just mes I I was just entranced by it all so and I became like the studio nerd yeah. you know who just hung out with the guys at the back yeah. there learning you know, all That's the production what... you were interested in all that side of it as well then obviously uh, I, I no no women were in the studio in those days there were the artists who would come in and come out but I ended up hanging around all the time and learning yeah all the time brilliant so when did you decide to go a bit solo because you went solo eventually didn't you you went you thought right I'm gonna did you have some time off between that from you know from Dolo did you just carry on or how did it work uh, out well really what happened was that David walked out he actually broke up Dollar yeah. uh, which was I was I, I guess um being very fair Trevor Horn couldn't finish our album, which was a heartbreak because of ABC. And uh, I saw Martin Fry actually about two months ago. And I said, you know what? I really should not like you very much, but I think you're fabulous. And we had a laugh and a good chat because we used to see each other in the studio a bit. And I actually heard um, uh, the first songs in the studio I was there one day and I was invited in and I suddenly went, well, of course I understand why Trevor's doing this because it was just, oh, poison arrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Brilliant unbelievable. Songs. Brilliant. So I said, yep, I guess that, you know, trumped, you know, it was just this thing. But um, so that's what happened. And then everything got too hard. So David Van Day left yeah. and uh, we were sort of had big, big, serious plans in place to break into the US market. And uh, we had a US manager. Right. And I remember we were in Hong Kong and I suddenly thought, I don't really know what to do here because uh, I'm stuck here now. And I phoned her, I said, well, I don't know what to do. I said, it's not normally a thing I would admit because yeah. I normally know what to do. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, he said, well, what you're going to do is you're going to get on a plane and come and speak to me in New York by way of Hawaii with two days R&R. Yeah. At the Kahala Hilton. He said, this is the hotel. And he actually wow. told me, he said, you are going to stay here. I will book your room. You are going to get a flight. I will organize that. You are going to come and speak to me. And he ended up saying, you're going to be a solo artist and I'm going to manage you. And that's how it happened. Wow. One of the few times in my life where I was so adrift, I didn't really, because David and I had been an item for seven years, yeah. first boyfriend and all this career. And then suddenly, what do you do? I mean, yeah. lots of people feel like that. Yeah, Big career they do. changes. Of course yeah. they do. It's scary. Yeah. So it was a turning of a new page really for you. And you thought, well, yeah, this was the start no, of something it, new. Yeah, it was. And I wasn't really that keen, but <laughs> um, Bud Prager, who actually was the manager of Foreigner, one of the biggest oh, rock well, bands. Really brilliant band again, aren't they? And uh, I kept saying, why are you interested in me? And he, and he chuckled. You go, I don't know, but I think there's something there. And I go, OK. I mean, you know, it, it was a very interesting relation. He's no longer with us, sadly, but uh, he was very powerful and yeah. uh he believed in me and uh that's how i got my solo career together which was not ever what i wanted to do to be on my own uh yeah. i did it but the upside of that was i got to work with the best british songwriters on the planet you know yeah. and uh forever grateful for that what a, what an education so good right i mean we're coming bang up to date now as well and you got a brand new song out haven't you is it exciting <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I gave me, I pushed music to one side, you know, yeah. uh, and one can have things running in parallel, but I think lots of things were happening in my world. So I stopped listening to music for some seriously, not, not classical, but pop music. I just opted out. Yeah. And then recently coming back in, I am so intensely um, interested in music, modern music, other thing, all kinds of music, and uh, so this latest song is uh, actually a track, uh, uh, a song that I wrote with my son, yeah, 12 14 years ago wow. when he was doing a music degree and I was fiddling around with something trying to learn about, um, was it Garage Band or something even back then? Yeah. And he's going, Oh, what's that, mum? I said, well, it's just something I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, and, I, and I'm digit, uh, you know, I'm really not very good on apps and stuff, but I'm getting better. I'm trying. Yeah. And uh, he goes, oh, can I have a go? I said, yeah, go, go for your life. And he sort of came up with this. So we had this mother son kind of thing going on. And uh, I recorded it with a, a very young girl band in, in Sydney that almost got through to the, um, to, to go through with Sony, but didn't. Yeah. And uh, I suddenly thought about it the other little while ago and thought, hmm, it's good, you know, and very happy with how it sounds. You know, it's uh, it's cool. It's yeah. certainly not 80s retro. Yeah. And it's not cool, cool, but it's somewhere in between, which I kind of like. Yeah, yeah, it's modern. Um, so you teamed up with Stephen Fox. So is that a couple of years ago then, or...? How long ago would that be when you? Uh, I first was introduced to Stephen in 2019. I had this, which is the beginning of why we're having this chat now, is yeah. that I came up with this crazy idea in early 2019. Maybe I should do something musically again. And, uh, and so I thought, oh, maybe I'll put on a one-woman show, which is the worst idea, because it's all right. on you. Yeah. So I devised this show, a bit of chat, Q&A, lots of musical inter in interludes, a bit of an unplugged section as well, acoustic. Yeah. And, uh, but just for one night in the UK from Australia, which is crazy really, but that's what I did. <laughs> and I needed someone to sing a few of the songs with me and a good friend said, got this great guy, he's a great singer, he moves well, I think you'd look good visually. Yeah. And so I was introduced to Stephen and we only met I think the day before, we had a bit of a rehearse. And, we, and I went, this is great. Wow. And COVID hit, of course. Yeah. And then I got back in touch. I said, are you up for thinking about doing this? He went, yeah. And I went, wow. You know, and I thought, how easy is it? It's just 
felt right. Yeah, it sounds right. It sounds great. The combination yes. works there, doesn't Very. it? Yes, he has a. It's interesting. He has a incredible voice. Um, no comparisons, but uh, <laughs> he's also really um, immersed himself in the dollar catalog and learned so much more about our music and and so he's actually um adapting his voice yeah. to make sense of what we're doing which is fabulous so he's he's on a learning curve and enjoying the musicality and so am I so that's really nice yeah. and likewise um he's just a fantastic performer oh my gosh he's brilliant yeah so are you based in Australia then is that where you yeah I from? live in Sydney Sydney yeah, so do you come back to the UK occasionally? How's that work? Do you come back like once a year or? Oh, uh, no, I've, I, this, I've been back and forth about uh, twice in the last four months. And next year, looks like I'm going to be back and forth about four times. So I'll almost be splitting my time. Lots of things in the pipeline. I mean, seriously, lots of things. And I didn't know if I'd want to, but yeah. I actually do. And I think the fab thing is what I never thought about is that we all kind of grow older together. Yeah. yeah and it's uh, an interesting thing with all our, and our memories of what we have, our nostalgia yeah. and our interests. And it's it's kind of like it's a, a very communal communal kind of experience. And I, I, I love that. So the live shows were great. The festivals I did recently with Let's Rock, uh, we did Let's Rock Scotland and Northampton. Never done a festival like that in my life. Never done a festival. Wow. It was such fun. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It was absolutely amazing. All right. So you sound like you're back right back on it now. You're really, really yeah. enjoying yourself now. I am. Yeah, I can see it in your face. Um <laughs> now I was gonna come to the biggest fan right in the UK, and he's a good friend of mine actually. And he was a nightclub manager. Uh, when I say nightclub manager, he was in a big group in the UK and he had 250 DJs working for him and he used to travel around. It's called Tony Curtis. That's a great name, isn't it? Before you start. <laughs> great name. Conjures great name. up respect and pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, oh, I said, I'm going to be talking to Teresa Mazzani. He said, you're not. And you know, he's one of your biggest fans. Um, when we used to hang around together and all when we were kids, I mean, I'm in my 60s now. So is Tony. But, you know, like you said before, you remember. Oh, am I? I know you. I know. But you look a lot better than me and Tony. So. <laughs> <laughs> subjective it's subjective <laughs> so when we went back you know all those years and i mean you, you're right your memories are really strong aren't they especially musical memories you know anything music yeah. wise double strong and he said oh no and he said if i was to take Teresa out for a meal like say she you came over to the uk what sort of restaurant would you like to go to what would be your answer okay i'd like to go somewhere um not too posh, yeah. but um, elegant, understated, private, not too noisy so you can actually hear each other, and nice, clean, simple, quality food. Nothing fancy. Right, that's good because there's a cafe nearby to where he lives. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Tony, you listening? I hope so. All right. <laughs> And I, I don't, I, I'm a, I'm a pescatarian. I only eat fish and right. veggie stuff. So yeah. that's me. I'm very clean. No cream sauces and all that stuff. No. I'm a very clean, healthy eater. I'm a bit the same as you, but my wife oh, likes to have all those sauces. And you know what? You have to go along with it sometimes, don't you? Yeah. It, it's. I, I just can't. Um. I, I really can't. And I'm very aware of. I'm a very small person with yeah. a big 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 imagination <laughs> and, uh, and, and you get to a point where you have to go you have to understand if you understand your body you have to know what's good for you I'm going do you know um, I'm 69 wow. I'm going to be 2025 is going to be such a busy year yeah. um I think I'm having a book out as well if I could finish it which would be another whole thing another whole conversation but I'm going to be 70 can you imagine it's a big number and I'm going I'm just getting my second mojo going. Yeah. How could I possibly be 70? It's just such a weird thing. Yeah. Well, I, it's fascinating. It, it yeah. really is interesting. It's You're interesting. 
you're amazing. You look amazing. I can't believe that. And I think a lot of people now don't think about it too much. It's just it's a bit of a number, isn't it? And my sister's in the 60s and she says, yeah. it's just uh, uh, the new 50s. <laughs> she puts it back it, like that. It, it is It is true. And I think um, there's been such a a real, uh, with people, I, I think more of the ageism kind of negativity with people in the workforce who yeah. are judged by purely by a number their age rather than their experience and their their um abilities you know that is just seriously wrong um and also the other hand the other side of it is whatever people are doing and that's partly why I kind of like to bang the drum a bit whoever you are and whatever you're doing don't let the number yeah your barrier to stop you trying to do whatever you didn't get to do when you were young or whatever you wanted to do, but you were too busy working or had commitments. Why is an age number stopping you from doing, have a go? Mm. What's stopping you? Yeah. Uh, I think that's really important because that it shapes who we are as we get better. Because, I mean, really. because, you, because you're feeling that and you're enjoying yourself. I mean, doesn't it, it helps you health wise, doesn't it? hundred that's right so everything is it's all part of the same package it really is so I, you know if, if I can share that in on any platform I'm happy to do that because it it is very personal to me yeah. you know I'm, I'm not going oh I'm you know the age thing well yeah you know and yeah I wore a mini skirt and, and kind of some friends came over I said we saw your um your let's rock Scotland your pink fluoro miniskirt you look great because if you've got the legs flaunt them I said do you think so I said I liked it at the time I'm now having a bit of a reflection she said why and I said yeah no don't know why because that's it if you've got something about yourself that you love yeah do it you know it's uh fantastic you look amazing um so stuck's out at the moment are you got plans to bring out any more songs after that or is it just you know, just sticking with that one. Oh, I was going to get yeah. stuck with that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's lovely. Um, no, um, actually had a um, a WhatsApp from um, the lovely guy Gary who runs Energize our label. He's going, we need to have a conversation about follow ups and new music, and I said, yes, we do yeah. because there's a lot going on in my life always, and I'm kind of busy. But uh, no, so we are going to be making an album. Brilliant, and uh, we need to have lots and lots of we need to get on with the job and uh the wonderment of tech nowadays i can be here stephen can be in the uk yeah. he's a consummate professional he gets the track um i can get a track we can swap backwards and forwards with the producer we can do things we send stems across it's it's so much simpler yeah and so um it's more just prioritizing I yeah think. yeah yeah so it's opened things. up a lot of a lot of different ideas doesn't it the internet it's bad for some yeah. things but it's really good for others isn't it? It, it and connectivity i mean you're wherever where are you my darling we're in where are you? st anne's in the uk near Love you know, it. not far from manchester blackpool that way exactly you know and i'm in sydney and it's like we're next door yeah it, that's what i mean it's just it's such a wonderful thing that the lip that it's boundless now in what we can achieve so um, yeah, but I have to get on with it. I just have to try and prioritize. I'm I, I'm like a butterfly. I'm flitting <laughs> from this to that. And I'm also very practical in you know, and, and strategic, but to get it all together, yeah. And then life that gets in the way, you know, all the stuff that we have it, to do. It is a problem when you're a creative person, and I, I get accused of that because I like to do all the production and stuff like that, and I've always done that. Oh, do you do that too? Okay. The radio cool. stations and jingles, and I've had my own radio station for three years. And but you have to have tried, as opposed to it being this niggling thing. Yeah. Probably that's called regret when yeah. you get too old to do that. To go, why didn't I try? Definitely. So, it, it yes, but you'll 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 claw that back and more. Yeah, learning from that experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's, I've done it, like you're saying. We learned from it, and uh, always Me take too. positives away from the worst situations. Me know. too. And, Me uh, too. We had great fun doing it, and we had a really big audience up and down the UK, so it was really good. Well um, done, you... you know, 
it, but uh, yeah, it's n- n- nothing ventured, nothing gained, but mm. you are big, greater and bigger because of that experience. Yeah. yeah. How, do people, how do people find out about you then on the internet? What's the best way? I mean, <laughs> social platforms, which would be your favorite platform? Are you, oh you're going to be on God. the socials, aren't you? Oh, I'm a dab hand now, aren't I? Because I, ha- <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to. So, um, cast our minds back. Um, twenty January 2023. Yeah. One, some very kind person was running my Facebook that I had nothing to do with for a decade. I think I had 2.4K followers, which was, and they used to post something every now and again. I didn't even know what it was about. Didn't yeah. do anything. Didn't look. Yeah. Um, because I'm writing this book, uh, which actually got to a very big, well, to, to, to Random House, very big publisher. Yeah. To acquisition, they said, we really are interested in this, but her social media just doesn't stack up. So I said to my literary agent, what do I need? He yeah. said, mm-hmm. well, maybe 20K is a starting point. I went, okay, watch me. So the whole of 2023, I started to learn about that and I do it all myself. It's pitiful. Wow. It's better. Now. Pitiful, but everyone knows it's me. And now in September 2024, we're on 21K Brilliant. Um, Facebook, which is the main thrust because the, those are, that's the, um, that is probably the platform that maybe is best serving me. Yeah. But um, Insta, I'm just more getting into. I think I've got 1.5K, but I have to work harder. But um, I'm learning. Yeah. We're going to keep in touch anyway, because clearly we have a connection here and we could be talking yeah, about that. Great. Yeah. Wish you all the best with the latest song. Stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll link back to it and everything as well. We can actually put the videos on our website and everything like that. So, but it's been great chatting to you. I've been, I'm so chuffed and uh, it's really nice to catch up with you. And uh, just say hi to Tony, will you, before we go? I, uh, hello, Tony. Um, this is a message just for you from me. Um, you just let me know when you're around and when I'm in the UK, if I can pop by to that little cafe around the corner that would be really lovely and we could just catch up how about that thanks again for joining us anyway Teresa it's lovely to have you on and uh, maybe we'll speak soon maybe in the new year or something when things are I mean you'll you'll probably be too busy by then no I won't I'm never too busy for people that I like never ever if I have info that is good to talk about I'll send you uh, an email and, and just go oh this is happening. Do you want to schedule a chat for whenever you think that would be appropriate to market yeah. and do something? Of course oh, I will. Lovely. Brilliant. Okay. Of course I will. I'll let you go anyway. And uh, we'll Thanks, speak soon, darling. hopefully. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. And um, maybe we'll meet in person when I'm there next year. That'd be oh, great. That'd be fabulous. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a lovely day. Yeah, Bye you now. too. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us and sharing in the untold stories of the stars. In the world of showbiz, there's always another story waiting to be told. See you next time. It's your biz podcast.